water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burden on to you. I sing, Father. hospitals not by choice many are behind bar Lord we ask you this hour to touch them we have come Lord now that we are better than those who have been bound by the enemy we come in humility this morning not by my not by power but by your grace Touch our heart, O oh God, and open our spirit tonight to receive from the throne of grace that we will find help in time of need. Many have come, O oh God, with different, different situations. Many have come, Lord, with something pressing and suppressing, but we come, Lord, that you, God, will be glorified. Lord, we pray this morning, help us. Not just not to be the hearer of your word, but let us be the doer of your word, Lord. We well, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Have your seat. God bless you. You guys look very wonderful this morning. It's a great thing. The Bible says it is pleasant 
thing to be in for brethren to dwell together in unity. I want your fully attention. There are a few things I want you to copy this morning that will help you after receiving them from the Lord. This is a fresh Sunday in the 11 months of 2022. You will never see this Sunday no more. <laughs> After this Sunday, 2022, November 6th, will be no more. You can't come again. You want to remember it. So we are blessed to be here this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. There are work to do. You know, bless the Lord, we are here. Amen. Amen. I want to bless the Lord for Prophetess Dovi. Wish my wife. Amen. I bless the Lord. I want to celebrate her. I love her. Every morning I wake up, I tell her I love her. She says, hmm. <laughs> Amen. I say, say it by. She can. Because that man's supposed to love the woman, right? Yeah? Sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I do love her. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I love every one of you this morning. Thank God, Pastor Kufar, and the rest of the church. Bless the Lord for you. Angel, I won't see you after church. I see you for two years. That's my baby right there. Amen. God bless you. Amen. There are a couple of names here that I want to meet you right after service. Please, I'm asking you to please wait. You know, be let us be obedient to just wait. I want to see um, Brother Clement. Clement. I want to see Brother Clement. Um, my son got a meeting. I want him to be there, but he got a meeting to go to. So, you know, he won't be able to be there. And uh, I want to see Brother Clement. I want to see Sister Latoya. I want to see and her husband. I want to see, and, uh, you know, Brother Emeka as well. Emeka know what I want to talk about already. So I want to see Brother Emeka in a very special way. Amen. Sister Karon got to rush to go to work because I want her to be there, but she got to go to work. So she won't be there. Amen. I would have really loved for her to be there, but no problem. Amen. Hallelujah. And also Sister Martina. Amen. These are names. I want you to please meet me right after service. And, you know, and Martina, Brother Clement, Brother Emeka, of course my wife will be there, so these are named Pastor Kufa, and then the Brother SG as well. Amen? I want you to please, just for a while. And also Sister Kim, Sister Kim can be there too as well. That's all. I don't want to part of my office, so that's it. I could have told the whole congregation to be there, but that's something important I want to discuss. We got real, real quickly. It's just less than five minutes, and then... You can go there and eat your Madonna. Pastor Kofa will not talk, so you don't worry. <laughs> because Pastor Kofa will talk, he says, <laughs> Amen. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be like, oh, Pastor Kofa. They make him be talking important things. You'll be murmuring. I can, I can be washing you. Hallelujah. Yeah, important things. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for so much. Uh, today, the one to bless the Lord, you know, and, and you too, I want you to be there, amen? I just forgot. I got, you got to be there. You mealy, hey. amen? You the me pressing, I want you to be there, hallelujah, amen? Very important. We discussed it before, but we think we got to reiterate it. It's very important in a very special way. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, and then Exodus Let's 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 see Genesis fifteen thirteen. Let's just go to Genesis fifteen thirteen. Father, we thank you. I will finish one fifteen. So I won't tell you when I will finish. So one fifteen, amen. So that you can just keep looking at the time. Let us stand for the reading of the word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. I want us to read together as a church. One, two, three, go. Certainly, yeah. that your descendant will be stranger in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will be afflicted 
they were a fled then 400 years. God speaking. Amen. They were a fled then and they will be there for 400 years. God was speaking. This passage was God himself from his mouth. He was speaking to Abraham. He said, Abraham, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, land that is not for them. And we serve them, and they will afflict them. God put in punishment on them. They will afflict them. 400 years. Somebody afflicting you for 400 years. <laughs> Imagine that. 400 years. Hallelujah. God was speaking. Have your seat. My message today will be entitled, The Danger of Delay. The Danger of Delay. Thank you, my supporter. The danger of delay. Hear me well. Everybody hear me. Give me a, your attention. I want to speak this. Every message I preach, I experience it. I know the effect of it. And after God has delivered me from it, and he will not instruct me to tell all us so that it can be afflicted. The only reason why God will deliver you from his thing so that you can tell all those people the effect of it. Amen? Let's see the book of Luke chapter 22, I think verse 3. Verse 3 of Luke 22. Jesus was speaking right here in a passage of the scripture where Jesus I was speaking. Jesus said to, Jesus was he's speaking to yeah, then, that, what I, then Satan and no, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, it's not, it's not Jesus, it's the Bible. Then Satan and Jula Ascara, some name was Ascara, a the twelve. No, that that's not what I want. I know that's another one. I got it there, but that's not what I want. Amen. Let me just find what I want quickly. But you can also go to verse one of that scripture. Probably that's it. Let's just look at area quickly. Mm. All right. Luke 22. Yeah, it's 16, Luke 22. But uh, let's go to verse 31. 31 of sin, Luke 22. Let's see what God is saying concerning us this holy day, first day, you know, first Sunday rather of 2022, November. I want us to read. Take, have your seat and just read this. And I want you now to just read it. I want you to to comprehend it and to let it sink inside of you. Let's go. One, two, three, go. And the Lord said, who said? The Lord. I want you to repeat that. Who said? The Lord. Prophet Fewer. No, I want you to talk by. Prophet Fewer said. The Lord. Mother Duvi said. The Lord. Who said? The Lord. Bishop Kuhn said. The Lord. Keep saying it loud. I want you to say it. The Lord. Keep saying the Lord. the Lord. I see some of you not talking. Don't, don't. You eating or are you hungry? Keep saying it. Who said? The Lord. The Lord. Say it louder than the devil know that the Lord is saying something. Who said? The, the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. Got some strength inside of you. And the Lord said, Simeon, in this Satan have asked for you that he may shift you as wheat. Satan is asking for Peter. <laughs> Who said don't ask for Peter? The Lord. God can sometimes go, I mean, Satan can sometimes ask for permission to, to shift some of you, the wheat. Because Satan can't do anything where God ain't getting permission. Amen? But I want to see the response of Jesus right here in the passage of scripture. The danger of delay. I miss my text. Hallelujah. My team. Let's look at verse 32 quickly. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brothers. Now, that is very explainable. Now, 
on Friday, I was speaking about the prophetic high work. And uh, I was talking about how, you know, let me go back. Let me kind of fast track a little bit so you can understand what I was saying. Because I want to bring that right here as well. Friday service was so powerful. And I was speaking on the prophetic. You know, and I was saying that uh, a prophet is God messenger. Amen, somebody. A prophet is a messenger, a news carrier. A prophet is a news carrier from God to men. Are you with me? I'm going to catch you because it's true I'm telling you. A prophet is a news carrier. He takes news from heaven and he relates it to the people. He take news from Jesus because the Jesus who put him in that position according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. I gave you prophet, teacher, and all of that. So now, God now will give you a message for you. Now, if God gave me a message for you, that's my assignment. It is not, the message is not for me. Nobody hearing this. Hear it very clear. The message is now a for me, it is for you that God gave it to me to give you. Amen. So it's what you do with a message, it level you. Yeah. Am I speaking to somebody here? Amen. It is what you do with a message that God gave me. I don't have nothing to do with a message anymore. It level you. That's the role of a prophet, to bring the message. Now it level you to do what the message say. A prophet it's like a mailman. He dropped the mail in your mailbox. Whether it is a bill that is about to disconnect your relationship, the mailman has nothing to do with that. You need to do something about the mail because it is for you. Whether you read it or not, the mailman has nothing to do with it. Whether you put it in the trash, the mailman have nothing to do with it. Whether you read it or not, the mailman have nothing to do with it. It is your responsibility to read the mail and do what the mail say. To free yourself. So I was so angry in my spirit, but I didn't, they don't want to cool up because they have a bunch of naive, a bunch of naive and ignorant people on earth. I never knew that. When I see their comment on Facebook and see their comment on social media, I know that they're foolish. Very foolish. No wisdom. I will preach on wisdom on, on Friday. Wisdom and the prophetic. No wisdom. That's why you need wisdom. If you have wisdom, you will not participate on some things that people are saying on Facebook. If you are wise, you will not engage yourself into some foolishness that foolish people are making. You will not. Because the Bible says, a wise person walk with wise. The wise walk with the wise. Amen, somebody. Amen. So they were making a lot of, lot of comment about how Prophet Samuel King prophesied the death of Davido or Davido January 7, send this year, January 7, I'm preaching, delay is dangerous. And he, it was on social media from January 7, when the boy died? October what? From January to October 31st, how many months? 10 months. You want to tell me? Nobody could get to Dubido. That so he can get to the prophet to ask the prophet what should be done to reverse the situation. Now the foolish part about this is that there are people who say the prophet should have prayed to cancel. The prophet is a mailman. The prophet is a messenger. And listen to this. Some of you I know a plane on you, but I will get to the place. Hallelujah. Amen. Delay is dangerous. The prophet gave a message. He had no power to cancel whatever it is. He prayed a level with God to answer 
and let regard to do it. But his, his position is to intercede on behalf. Regarded, listen to me, hear this, hear this very well. Everybody hear this, open your ear because I need to educate some of us. Amen? The Bible says God revealed to what? Say it loud, God revealed to what? Amen. But do you realize there is no redemption with all sacrifice? Every redemption comes with sacrifice. <laughs> I know some of you hear it before, amen? You cannot redeem a country if you don't go through a lot of sacrifice. Sometimes people die. So there is no redemption. Don't let any of your friends mislead you. I'm speaking, I'm on an oath, I'm on an obligation. I'm on an oath to teach you the Bible. If I teach you anything, I will please myself, God will punish me. But I'm going to show you what God is saying. Amen. Amen. So you see what I'm saying? To teach you the word. He's a male man. Ten months. God has nothing to do with that. He can pray. But there is no redemption with our sacrifice. For God so loved the world, he came to redeem us. Blood was shed. Somebody got to die. Sacrifice got to be made. There is no redemption. We're all sacrifice. I can show you from scripture to scripture upon scripture. Old and New Testament. Because some of you are so religious, you believe in the Old Testament. Some of you are so religious, only the New Testament you believe. That's okay, but I believe the full gospel. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There is no redemption or all sacrifice. A waste doctor, somebody have taken your knee to a native doctor and played 200 on their altar. To redeem yourself from that altar, you play 400 there. I'm serious. It's in scripture. Amen. If our businessman, someone, if, if I'm selling this, this is this for me, this food for me, and I'm saying a hundred dollars, somebody will give me one fifty. When I say no, I don't want one fifty. I want hundred dollar. No matter how you reach, you will take more. I'm serious. The Bible says I'm speaking Bible. The Bible says Gideon in the book of Judges chapter six. Gideon father had an altar in his house. That was making them now prosper. Judges chapter 6. He had an altar. His father had an altar in his house. That was making them the least. Because his father was serving adults. The bar. Altar of bar. B-A-A-L. So when God came to Gideon and said, Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. I'm selling you to redeem Israel. Gideon said, no, it's not possible, God. I'm the least in my father's house. How can I deliver Israel? And the Bible said in Judges chapter 6, verse 25, God came to him that sin that and said, the problem that making you the least is the altar that your father has in his house that making you the least. Break it down and build a bigger one and a higher one to redeem yourself. It's in scripture. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You don't build a lower one. Build a higher one than what your father had built. And sacrifice on it for redemption. Are you with me somebody? Hallelujah. Are you with me somebody? Redemption. Men of all we have become so, 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 some kind of way we don't even know. So, the man of God, I don't know him, I, haven't, I, don't even, I don't know his, I don't even know him, but I'm just speaking on behalf of all men of God, those who are called in the prophetic. Are you with me? <clears throat> because if a prophet gave you a message, a level to say, prophet, what should I do? What can I do? What is there to be done? Listen, in Ezekiel 36, 37, I'm giving you scripture so you can look at it later on. The Bible says, and the Lord took Ezekiel and set him in the middle of dry bones. And the Lord said to Ezekiel, can this bone live? Ezekiel said, I don't know, Lord, you know. <laughs> he said, you know, because it's in God's power. Then now God had to agree with Ezekiel and said, but then prophesy to the bone. 
I'm giving you the instruction now. He said, call flesh to come unto them. That is an instruction. Because every prophetic word comes with instruction. Don't get it twisted. God will not send me to you and give you a message with all instruction in the message. Every, every prophetic word, hear this word. Don't be naive. Every prophetic word comes with instruction. When the prophet went to the widow, there was famine in the land. But when the prophet went, the prophet went with instruction and said to her, you want a lot to happen for you? She said, yes. But I have a little flour and oil. I have my son about to eat it and die. So God gave me the prophet instruction. He said, tell her she will give you fresh. <laughs> May God open your eyes. Somebody shout hallelujah. God said to this widow, he said, tell her, let her cook for you fresh to eat. And after the prophet have eaten well, satisfied, then you can now prophesy that she will never go hungry anymore. Instruction. Somebody slap your name and say instruction. In the New Testament, Jesus said, I mean, Jesus' mother said to them, whatsoever he tell you to do, do it. That is an instruction. Yes. Mr. Dovido, we see sorry for you. We eat sympathy with you. But somebody could have told you, call the prophet because there's going to be an instruction given to you to save your son. Don't play with prophetic word. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't play with prophetic word. Now, what I brought this up for you to understand. There are a lot of people God has given me prophetic word for, and I warned them. And I gave the instruction what to do. Like the lady on the prayer line who died because she refused to follow the instructions. I told her, don't go to Labra. Bishop could know the story. Y'all know the story. And she went because she had seen her continue by home. And then she was going for a land business. Seven days she died. You got leprosy. You go to the prophet. It will prophesy that he will heal your leprous. Send to the prophet. The prophet said, okay, you know what? For you to get healed, go dip yourself in the pool. How many times? Seven times. Is that not instruction? Slap your neighbor say, every prophetic word, it have an instruction. What should I do? Go dip yourself seven times. Oh, man, if you don't want to dip yourself seven times, it level with you. You don't want to get healing. You don't want to be delivered. There is an instruction for a prophetic word. So I was telling my wife the other day, I said, it is not enough to have a prophet in your life. What matters is the obedience to the prophet. Believe the prophet. And what happened? And you shall prosper. Shake my hand. The woman don't bow too much. Somebody shout hallelujah. So it's not yet enough. It's good to have a prophet. Every man needs a prophet. But many of us have prophets that we are despising. And whenever you despise the prophet, you despise God. Because he's not of his own. God is the one who sent him. Jesus could not wear miracle in your hometown because of their own belief. Then you won't force him to wear miracle? No, you have a part to play. Mr. You got a power to play. There are two things that are destroying people. Pride and fame. You talk about that. When you got fame, you think that you all that. And then you pry again. Who? Should I call this man a God? He want my money. He wants something from me. Not every prophet hungry. I can never be hungry. So long as I have you here, I can't be hungry. Because I will come to your house. I will call your phone. Somebody shout hallelujah. I can't. Every prophet come with instruction. Give me Amon 3 verse 7. Yeah, yes. Sir. God teaching my message around. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to preach. Amen. I'm going to preach anyhow. Look at Amon 3 7 quickly. They will come back to loot. I think. That real. One, two, three, go. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret towards you to his servant, the prophet. Hallelujah. 
There are things about you God will reveal to the prophet. Because the Bible says God does not do anything. But whatever concerns you, that's why you're going to be connected to a prophet. He will reveal it to the prophet. When you reveal it now, you, you have something to do about it. What is the prophetic word you give? What is the prophetic word? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> what is the prophetic word? That God do nothing. God will not do it. But he revealed his secret to his servant the prophet. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So my duty is to give you the message. It is left for you to follow in the instruction. That's it. When the Lord gave me a prophetic word, Prophet knows I had wealth that they were going to have a baby in one year time. That was my word. He left for you to go to work. Okay, nobody's talking, but somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody clap, somebody shout hallelujah. I can't wait for him. No. My duty is again the word. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Go and if he's a prophet, say, I will have a baby. He goes home, gets in your bedroom, crown his leg, and starts sleeping and live with him. Somebody shout hallelujah. The word is there. You got to do something. Get to work. I told one of the on the bread and said, Sarah. I said, Say, Sarah, you and your husband, you want to chat. She's been asking for God for 11 years. And she said, When she, she said, Sarah, when she came to me, she said, I wish I knew you a long time. I said, tell you one day, have sex with your husband. Don't miss one day. She said, even when so, I said, don't worry. Whatever comes, just continue to do it. That's the instruction. Somebody say instruction. That's the instruction. Take the one day non-stop. Keep driving. It was the instruction that God gave me for her. I had to deliver it and level her. She said, even when, I said, even when, continue, don't stop. <laughs> you know what I mean, you're with me, you know what I mean. But she obeyed the word. She got a little boy now, I call him Papi. She obeyed the prophetic word. She did what she's supposed to do. So don't just have a prophet, believe. Because many of us have prophets that we despise, we don't even believe. And that's the danger of it that you bring with. Till. I ain't got time for the prophet. I can go to God myself. Mind you, it's a warning that what they stem in my own use. And God got angry. In Numbers chapter 12. She said, you do, you're the only person God using. God can use me too. That all. And God got angry. Prior making us stupid. Amen, somebody. Prior making us stupid. We don't listen to instruction. So, the law of God do nothing. My time is coming closer. So, let me go back to Luke 2. Luke 22. Look at Luke 22. I'm giving you something. So, don't be, don't, don't, don't go with the crowd. Because many times you go with the crowd, you will cry. Oh, the man of God lie. He's a liar. He too proud. He wanted to make money. He want this and that. Why he couldn't kill so? Is I supposed to kill so? You can't, you should contact me, homie. When I went to Africa 20, 2013, on a beach stadium, I announced that time Ebola was nowhere around. And I said there would be a thing that would kill thousands of people in this country. It coming. But the Lord want me to anoint all the entrants that come into the country. The president refused. The justice minister called her. And what a many, uh, John, John, John Sherry, who been here many times, he contacted the justice minister and called the president and said, one prophet from Liberia, I mean from America, here, he said there will be a sitting there. He wanted to consecrate every entrance that come in the country. She refused. She refused. She said, when you start praying every entrance, the Muslim people will start doing their own too, so we don't want it. She refused. 2014, Ebola King killed people that are crazy. So my, I could stop it. No, you refuse. So the instruction was given. You said, I shouldn't carry the instruction. Oh, what should I do? It's not in my power. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. These are some of the things that cause delay. Lack of belief. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. She never allowed me to. 
So let's go by. I want to rerun this message. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 38. For some of you who are not here Friday. Isaiah 38. Let's see something. Let me show you something very powerfully. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody got chest pain. It, it, it just left you now. Amen. You have a problem with your chest, like breathing, Hallelujah. but it's just gone. I just fed it now. It's gone. Amen. Amen. God told me to tell you that it's gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. As they are 38, not 28, 38. 38. Delay is dangerous. Danger of delay. Amen. Are you here? All right, I, read. I want everybody to look at this. I'm going to show you something. One, two, three, go. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah, the who? The prophet, the son of Amber, went to him and said to him, Thus said who? The Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. That's a prophetic word. Set your house in, in order, because you're about to die and not live. See the world, see the world. Look, look, see the world. Blessing, come say here. <coughs> Let's see a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. You should not live. Your pastor from today. Promoted. Amen. Say right there. Don't be on your phone. Amen. The prophet came with a message that you would not what? No, you will not live. You will die. The prophet business finish. I gave my message. There's something you got to do. Look at the next verse and see what the man did. After the message, he didn't say, God forbid, I reject the prophet, I reject it. No, you are a false prophet, you fail. Don't bring the message to me. There are some prophets that I know, they call them prophet of doom. The Uno prophets are bad things. Are they not called God? They are called by God. God using them. But the Uno prophets are destruction. That they are error. Don't come near them. <laughs> it's serious. After the prophetic work that he's going to die, see what he's second day. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord. He didn't reject it. He didn't overlook the word. He didn't say this man will go hungry. He did something about it. What are you doing with a prophetic word? He prayed. Look at somebody say he prayed. He didn't downplay it. He didn't overlook it. He prayed to who? To God. He didn't pray to the prophet. The prophet is a male man. He said, Simon is over. He brought a message and left for you to do something with the message. Don't overlook it. He turned his face, sacrificed me. He prayed to the Lord. Look at this, what happened. Look at verse 3. This is verse 3. And he said, remember now, O oh Lord, I walk before you in truth and in loyalty of heart. And how I have done what is good in your sight. He said, Can I work bitterly and reminded God of what Pastor Kofa was saying? He reminded God of his services in the house of the Lord. I pay my tithe correctly. I'm faithful in church. I never made church one day. He reminded God. And when God saw what Hezekiah was talking about, it was the true. Look at verse 4. After he reminded God, how I've been faithful. Never lay on time. And the, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thou said the Lord that God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen his tears, and surely I have had to his day 15 years. The prophet is a messenger. He gave the message. That was it. The man now pray to God. He believed that the message come from God through the prophet. So he prayed to the same God. And what happened? In the passage of scripture, listen to this. Hezekiah knew that the prophet can do nothing with all God. So he didn't tell the prophet what can we do. He went to God in prayer. And the same prophet that brought the bad news coming back with the good news. Somebody shout hallelujah. They see a prophet. Look at that kind of embarrassment. I can't prophesy they will happen. Now I come back and change my mind again. 
I say, we're not happy. The first thing, if you are a librarian, you call me false prophet. <laughs> if you are truly a librarian, you will call me false prophet. Maybe if you are a Ghanaian, you will. <laughs> Sevalonian, you might. Nigerian, you will call me false. <laughs> you brought good news first now. <laughs> prophet, what kind of man are you? You, you, you inconsistent? I thought you said, oh, that. no. What made the thing change? It was the thing that the person who received the message did. He never ignored it. It was what he did. It was what he did that changed the story. Take it. Who said story? God will bless you ten times. <coughs> listen, listen. It was what he did. He prayed. The instruction he prayed. And God said, oh, I heard him pray. You do, you like every news. Can you see news to him? <laughs> and tell him. The mailman. The mailman. Go by and tell him he will not die. Imagine, I strongly believe, if that brother, I don't want to keep calling his name, if that brother will go to go in there and pray and start looking for men of God, I heard a message, I saw a message on Facebook, his own family member came and said, he downplayed the message, I was not there, but family member came up. So it's not my business. I'm Kim, I'm only bringing a message to you. What are you doing? God revealed. You should be blessed. God seeing something, but you say you can do something about it. Because there are many who walk into things they didn't know. But at least you know, so you can do something about it. That's it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why anything you do by the grace of God, you consult your spiritual head, your prophet, because he will talk to God concerning you. Even if you want to get married, so you can marry the wrong person. Amen. Hallelujah. I am mean to sing my brother. Let me get you half far. Don't be shy. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Before he met this guy, he showed me one picture. I said, no, that's not the one. He right here. I said, no, that's not it. That person you marry, you are wohala. You will go into drugs and into, you'll be smoking, all of that. Don't marry that one. Don't look at, don't look at anything. I'm talking about character. When you show the next one, I said, that's it. Uh, somebody here, somebody said, hallelujah. Somebody said, that's it. If I was not a true prophet, I was going to say, oh, that one, that's it, though. I won't please you. No. I, con I condemn it. I put X. Before you, hey, somebody say amen. <laughs> it was before your wait time. I said, no. I still got the photos. When the second one came, after some time later, after months, months later, I look out for and I said, brother, you don't make it though. This one, I'll be that's it. God is telling me. And for sure, they're about to get married. I was doing that counseling. The way I talked to her, the way she responded, the kind of thing she talked, I knew she was the right woman for this guy. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Respectful, never smoke cigarette, never do anything like that before. In, the, in her whole life, she's been reserved and a good. God was just keeping her for my brother here sitting here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I put an X on to it. The first one I put X. I show you my phone. I put X. She can be jealous of my daughter. Somebody shout hallelujah. Consult him. My children, yeah, they were looking for a nurse. They say one. As my wife look at you, say no. I look at her, I say, God said, ah, that behavior problem. They want a behavior problem. She got plenty of behavior problem. Poor X to him. Call by poor X. That behavior problem. Bipolar. You can't, you can't have a nanny with bipolar. She might put your son in the way. Or your child in the way. Some of the child, hallelujah. So it's dangerous. Or push her or him down the step. I have seen videos of uh, nanny, wicked nanny, wicked nanny, beating people children. I've seen it. Even kill. Thank you. Beating people children. A guy play a secret camera in his eye and wonder where. You saw the video? See nanny flocking child, kicking child. <laughs> Especially those ones that have never had child before, they get feeding. They come with jealousy. Amen. That's why you need the prophet in your life by the grace of God. And give you the message. It level you to obey the message. My brother called me yesterday. Somebody had a dream about him. One of the immediate family members that the person coming down. He only prayed that he wanted a good giver. Honestly, know him very well. He gave the crazy. 
And he said, and I just said to him, and my brother, same father. And I said to him, the Lord wants you to break that death from what the person dream. I didn't criticize the person dream. I didn't say, oh, because your brother here is a prophet, condemn the other people. I never did that. Because it's not my place to condemn anyone. Any pastor or prophet that you condemn all of you, you're not called by God. There is no ministry called ministry of condemnation. It's not in Bible. But the Bible says we are called to the ministry of reconciliation and not condemnation. James chapter 4, verse 11. We are not called to condemn, to elify. I'm not in a dream. He said he had a dream about somebody dying in your family. When he called me as a prophet, I said, yeah, it's true. That broke on the altar. Where he was sitting, he left from me and said, I'm serious. I'm sending it right now so we can break it. Even I had to pay my mortgage, I had to cancel it, but I got to break this. He believed. Somebody saying what? He believed. Don't overlook prophetic word. When he comes. You got something to do with it. Okay, let's go back to Luke 22, verse 30. He said, can I pray? God changed your things around. He prayed. He did something about it. <laughs> Any prophet gave you instruction, please ask them what, I mean prophetic word. Ask them, what should I do? What is the instruction? What should I do? Prophet, what can we do? Because God revealed the redeemed. What can we do? What is that we should do? Then the prophet will give you instruction now. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. A little girl told the prophet and said, listen, he, when, when Elisha told him to go and dip himself in the river seven times, he got angry. Pride entered him. Is this the only water in Israel? You want me? <laughs> Why you can't take me to the clean water to take shot? Now you want me to take in the dirty water? One little girl came to him and said, sir, you are blessed. She, he said what? The prophet did not tell you hard thing. If you are going to tell you something hard to do, you have no choice. You are still going to do it. But the go take back. Maybe you've been fretting. You have not taken shower. Go jump. And <laughs> so, so you see. <coughs> now you see. So, so, so the little girl put sins in her. Some of all grown people, some small children need to put some sin in our head to believe. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen, Amen, somebody. Amen. My little daughter is away. She did something on my own upper. I didn't know. So I asked her, who did she hear that? That's the way to do it. Don't do it. They will do it this way. Call this thing. Call it. I said, come on, move from here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I took it. I said, I applied it working. I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Amen, somebody. She was repeating the thing. I was getting angry small. I said, what am I doing? I said, no, but God said, you better say what she's saying. Amen. <laughs> she just said it with that. It's Amber. I said, okay. You want to see you speaking? We'll speak it later on. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. So, 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 a little girl, the Bible say, in, in 2 Kings chapter 5, a little girl went to him and said, sir, you are blessed. The prophet did not get you hard thing. Because he didn't have no choice, you would do it. To go Take bath or to dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. Then you complaining. You better do it. You better do what he said. He came to him saying, he, he went and took bath in the Jordan and forgot about all the other clean river. And that river they told him to take bath in, it was dirty. <laughs> but little on did I know, you know, the reason why God told him to take bath in the because I really want God to know that Nehemiah was so proud. He was a proud man. Yeah, he was too proud. That's why they even reject him money. He was so proud. Whole captain, commander of the Syrian army, whole me, take by pride high him. And God says, saying you pride will make you take by with dirty water. You won't heat it. Go to the dirty water. <laughs> dirty water. Smell yeah, right. And he went there seven times. The dirty water made him clean. There are some things you're afraid to do. It will make you better. Amen. There are some things that dirty, but it's for your healing. There are some things that you will not let, but it's for your deliverance. There are some things that are hard to do, but the blessing is in something that is hard to do. Whatsoever he tell me to do, do it. The blessing is in the hard to do. 
He went to buy, he got clean. Yes, he got clean. What is it that you can't do for God? Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. 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 Is that where we were? Luke 22, 31. Let's go to 31. I want to show you something quickly so you can understand. I said, speak on the prophetic. So I show you can understand something. Just understand something. And the Lord said to him, Simeon, watch this now. Who said? Who said? Ask for you to shave it as wheat. Let's see, let's see, let's see the solution to this thing. But I have what? No, no, no. I have stop it. <laughs> God didn't stop it. Jesus did not stop it. What a prophet didn't stop the thing. No. He said, I have prayed for you. Are you with me? Be focused. Hear, hear this, hear this. He said, but I have prayed for you that when Satan finished dealing with you, your faith shall not fail. And when you have returned, strengthen your brethren. Many, Satan is about to deal with you. But when you come from there, you're not going to die. I'm praying. That when you come from out of here, and you will use it as a testimony to tell other people, it have not been for the law who have been on my side. I could have died. But I thank God when I think on the goodness of the law and all he has done for me. My soul cried out. If God was not for me, I could have been behind bar. I could have been in the hospitals. I could have been jacked up and wrecked up. But we're not thinking. Even though, let me say this. When God is for you, who can be against you? Can I talk to somebody here? There are some things that you went through, you came out of here. There are other will go through that same thing, they will not come out of here. Why are you coming up? Because you have faith in God. The Bible says, In Him I live, in Him I move, in Him I have my very being. For God I live, for God I die. Nothing will separate me from the Lord of God. I don't care what kind of thing come my way. I'm still going to praise God. I'm still going to bless God. Bless the name of the Lord. All day long. Come on, talk, Mother, talk to me. I will bless it in the morning, in the afternoon. I'm going to bless the Lord. Why don't you bless the Lord? Oh, my soul. Many of you, you can't come to church. You want to sit home and watch stuff that the devil is a liar. Am I talking to somebody here? Open oh, your understanding. He said, I pray for you. I didn't stop it for you. Hallelujah. I didn't stop it. I don't have power. It's left with God. But I only can pray that when you come out, strengthen your bright dreams. Don't be selfish. Strengthen them. Tell them, say, God, if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. If God can take me through it, God can take you through it. Somebody shout hallelujah. There are some things that could have take you out, but God was there for you. Even in hot water, he was there for you. He heard the people of God. You got to make sure to know that if the Lord was not on my side, Ezra meant to be, I mean the devil meant to destroy me. He turned it around. Brother, man, I don't know what he did, but you could have just reached out and just pray. What can we do? Let's pray. Amen, somebody. Let us pray. I have never seen. The Bible said, I have never seen. David said, I was young. Now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsake, nor a seed bear for bread. Let me tell you, so anybody who serves God, see, see it from your heart. God will never leave you in the trouble. He will never let you go because he said you search him from the heart. No one can serve God from your heart. They will come against you. Hell will break against you, but it will not do nothing to you because I know, David said, yet though I walk through the valley of the shower of death, I fear no evil for that are with me. Oh my goodness. When God is with you, says D, when God is with you, hell can break loose. They can accuse you. They can call you demon. They can call you liar. They can call you witchcraft. They get what men say. But when God is for you, sooner or later I hear God say, who are you to sin again, my child? Who is you to talk again, my servant? Who are you to speak evil against my child? I don't care you mend it for evil. Mm -hmm. 
low pros kanaba you meant it for evil you manguna you meant it for evil you want me to die you want people to leave the church you want about the more you carry gossip the may god bring people the more you lie on me the more good people coming but i don't know who i came to talk to have you not tired yet? have you not given up eh? you want to break me down you can't because what God have blessed no making Christ. What God have started no making do anything. I don't know your intention. You need to give up and say, oh, we have tried to break the man down. He can't break down. We lie on you. He can't be break down. Because whatever God is in, and you try to fight it, you are fighting God. I don't know who that kingdom talk to. Hear me? If this church were for me, it gone long time. But I know it is God. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Go and carry gas. Keep on lying on me and my wife. Keep on talking about us. Keep on lying. One thing I come to realize, I come to talk to somebody here. When God be for you, the devil is a liar. Keep wondering why we say all of this thing, but yet they say we can't believe. People still coming. Great people, good people still coming. Am I talking to somebody here? I have realized those who left, they are foundational people. When you build in a house, they are special people in deep foundation. When the foundation is done, they're gone. You can't find an animal. God will bring all the people that will build the building. And those who build the building, finish building it, they leave. There are all that will put a zine and put a stuff over the building. So when your time is over, you better walk out the door. Because God is bringing good and great people. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to somebody. Don't cry because somebody walk away from your life. The reason they walk so that God can bring good people. Am I talking to somebody? Never cry because somebody Somebody left you. Your destiny is not tied to no man. Your decision is not tied to no man. It is unto the law. The Bible says, For him I live, for him I die. Am I talking to somebody here? Stop crying because one joker walk out of your life. Don't cry. When joker walk, God will bring serious people. Somebody shout hallelujah. You want to break the world with the work of God down. Yeah. It can't be broken. Oh man, you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. You're not afraid. What is going on? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you not afraid? When you come with strengthen your brothers. Strengthen your brothers. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When you come for that strengthen your brother, you can't break what God has planned. The position I in Pastor Kofa, I didn't cry for it. Do you know what I was doing? I was facing hair. I was a hairdresser making good money. A weekend, I would make 1500 in Minnesota in my one-room apartment. Amen. 1500 All the weed, sewing, ponytail, cut hair. I master all those stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm not hungry. No. God said, going to do my work. I said, God, are you sure? He said, yeah, I want you to do my work. I call you to do my work. So you can't break what God has built. Many people that go against me, I just realize they want to be me. <laughs> they want what I have. Can't get it. Can't, what? can't get it. You got yours. You are a doctor. I'm a prophet. You get yours. You can't fight with the area God has placed me. The area God placed you, I can't fight you. You are there for your purpose. So these are the, some of the things that bring destruction in the church. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's what he said. It's in his word. You're not doing those things that God wants you to do, then you're complaining. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So watch this. As I come to a close, I got 15 more minutes, as I promise. Watch this. When God told the children of Israel that you will stay in a strange land for 400 years. God spoke. Do you know what happened? It never came to pass. I'm talking to a Bible reader. It never came to pass. The 400 year pass. What God said, Genesis chapter 15 verse 13, the 400 year came and passed. God, they never stay God free. That go by that. That go by that. Please, that go by that. Let me use my time small. Some of you work. I want you to call God fake God. Because God says something ain't happening. Call him fake. Call 
Because something wrong with you. <laughs> I told one, I was preaching online, and I told some group of people, I'm going to say that right here. I said, can you imagine Jesus died for a woman business? <laughs> the whole land got silent when I said that. I said, that's true. Jesus died for a woman. You know, woman, he died for a woman business. That died, he died on the cross. It was, it was because of a woman. Go read your Bible. You will come and tell me thank you. Some of you are quiet now. What kind of preaching day? Yeah. Too hard for I should eat my flesh and drink my blood and start going. Y'all won't go, y'all go. But Jesus died for a woman to show how woman is so important. Oh, who is a bra? Who is a bra? Woman. Who is a bra? The church. Is the church not a bra? Yeah. He died for the bra. Nobody hear what I'm saying. What are your gods? So quiet. You don't know what to do. Jesus died for his bride. It's in the scripture. Die. The Bible says, Husband, love your well as Christ loved the church that he gave himself for it. Amen. When he coming back, he coming back for a brow with all spot, with all wrinkle. So the death of Jesus was not for anything. He died for woman. So if I die for my own woman, don't get hurt because if Jesus can die for a woman, I can die for my wife. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, to see how powerful a woman is. Die. If Jesus, I told him God just gave me a revelation and I was telling him. I didn't get it from nowhere, from God. Jesus said die for the bra. Something died for bra. All right, let me leave that alone. I don't want to join that message because I will make you sing on your feet all day. I care your truth. Yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Hallelujah. He died for her. Let the the Bible college. Hallelujah. Yeah. And a pastor I was talking to, he got quiet. They got quiet on the phone. Yeah, you got quiet. The prophet, she said, die for a woman. If you're ignorant now, you will attack me because me know you're talking or you know. Prophet said Jesus died for a woman. So Jesus had a woman. The Bible said he gave himself for the bra. The church is a bra. He died for a bra. I said he tell me bra that man. Because some of y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I pray for y'all today in Jesus' name. Look at what he said. Genesis. Go to Genesis. Genesis 15, 13. Let me close this thing out. Genesis 15, 13. Let's read together. One, two, three. Go. Everybody read. Then he said to Abraham. No of setting it that your descendants will be strangers in the land that is not theirs, and they will serve them, and they will be afflicted them. They will afflict them rather. For how many years? The Lord said to him, for how many years? For how many years? Four hundred years. That God was speaking of. Not prophet Phil. Four hundred years, they're not happy. It didn't happen. Go to Esther 1240. That they fulfill me of that scripture already. Esther 120 just 40. Esther 1240. Go there quickly, son. Esther 1240. Esther 12 verse 40. Are you there? Okay, can read it again. Once you go. So the son John of the children of Asia who lived in Asia was how many years? 430. Ah. What a delay. Why extra 30 years? God said for right here. What extra 30? 30 years, not joke. 30 years, you can build house, you can born, you can have children, you can have 30 extra years. They remain in the Egypt for 400, even though God said 400 years. Mama, they were there for 430. Don't let anything delay you. What God has said will happen. Don't allow prior stuff to delay you. When God say it must come to pass, I cancel delay from your life in Jesus' name. Why extra 400 years? The Bible says, let me tell you why. I'm going to get name it quickly, then I'll leave you. Amen? Why, there was, why extra 30 years? God said it. 
Was God fake? Was God a liar? He said it. God cannot lie. Cannot fake. But they are added to because they didn't do what they're supposed to do. They kept on adding their years of sentence. My women, I watched a guy who testified on YouTube. He was sentenced for 20 years. A man of God went to the prison and prophesied to him that your sentence will be 10 years. Which is a 10 years. He couldn't believe this thing. He changed his life. He started preaching in prison. He was preaching and preaching to people. He was a murderer. He killed. He was sentenced for 20 years. But then a pastor went to the prison and said, your sentence has been cut down. God said, I'm tell you, it's going to be 10 years. He said, but I'm looking at the paper in my hand. He said, 20. When he went for a trial to change the computer, the thing had changed to 10. The thing changed. They didn't even know how it changed. The second time when he went before the judge, because you can get your chance to go by and reappeal. He went before the judge. He said, you want to me know what to say. But he believed the prophetic word that came to him in prison. So he told the judge, he said, 10 years. He already spent six years in jail. And you know what? He said when they checked his record, his behavior was so good in prison. He was winning soul for Christ. His behavior had changed. He become nice while he was in prison. So the 10 years, they not really releasing the six year. He has stayed there for already. The judge didn't get eight more more. You can go home. A good behavior change it. When you want God to do something for you, you are arrogant and re and rude. You will still continue to add more. The children of Israel were afflicted. And the time where God is supposed to release them, the time came and passed because of their own attitude. They were bitter. They couldn't forgive. Yeah, it's in the scripture. These are the things that will cause you to delay. If you want to continue to delay your life, these are the things the Lord gave me tonight to give you. I didn't even finish everything here. You say, what? Yeah, let me, let me quickly see you ready now. Delay. What causes delay, number one, is unbelief. Number one is what? Unbelief. If that can believe all things. So if you don't believe anything, nothing works for you. You don't believe. The second thing that causes delay in your life is bitterness. You get bitter. You bitter. Can't forget. You get bitter. Year after year, you bitter. Some of you are so bitter now until your face is all getting bitter. The make are not helping you. They clean up because when you're bitter, it show. Get rid of bitterness and stop your delay. Some of you shout hallelujah. Don't be bitter. It's not good. Bitterness, unforgiveness. All right? You got unbelief, bitterness. They said the third one is what? Unforgiveness. Look at bitterness. Let me give you bitterness. Unbelief by is a plenty of scripture for it. I don't want to go through that tonight. Because that's what Jesus said. If that can believe all things is possible to them that believe. You know, you know to have a prophet and say, if you believe in the prophet, you shall prosper. So it's about your belief that will cause things to work for you and things will not delay. But the Bible says in those that were in Egypt, they did not believe, they have unforgiveness in their heart, and they were completely against God as well. Let's see. Unbelief, you can get a scripture from Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, verse 23. He said, Lord, help my unbelief. So his son could get well. Amen. I'm going to run out quickly. Uh, 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 bitterness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let's look at it real quickly. Ephesians 4, 31. Ephesians 4, 31. Who in the media boo? Hurry up. Let me help some people here. Hallelujah. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Let all bitterness and wrath, anger, crumbles, evil speaking, put away from you with all malice. Put it away. It will delay you. This is the word of the Lord. You just bitter. I can't afford to be bitter. Why? Because I want to be better. I can't. I, I don't care. You can ever do the worst thing to me. I'm not going to hold it against you. A level you and God will deal with you. Amen. Don't be bitter because why? God said, put it away. In Jesus' mighty name. Unforgiveness. Matthew 5 23. Look at Matthew 5 23. You can't forget. Matthew 5 23. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, which means your offering, and, and there remember that, you, that your brother has something against you, keep going. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. Fresh, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. You see that? 
So many people, they are all free, not going nowhere. Give, not going nowhere. Your worship is in vain. You got, eh, most of it, oh, you don't even have something against the church. You got something against the men of God, the pastor. You got that kind of thing. I have never sat down with my pastor before to talk any case. Never. I, I'm talking to honest truth. My bishop told me, say, you will go far. Because there are things that have never confronted him. Heaven is my witness. Whatever he say, I call him every day. I, I call him for everything. Amen, somebody. Amen. Why should I be better against him? God forbid. So it will stop you. you know. Then the last one is what? Unthankful. Ungratefulness. You can never get to where God wants you to get when you are ungrateful. Amen. Even somebody gave you raw before when you didn't have raw. Be thankful. But this perverse generation, that's what Jesus said, the perverse generation, they are a vapor snake. He called it a snake generation. That's what Jesus put it to them. Eh? Title? Entitlement. Thank you. You see that? It's crazy. You want to excel. You don't know what is ahead of you. I tell everybody, this is a message I got for you. You don't know what is ahead of you. Just because it's going good now does not mean it will continue. So you don't know what is ahead of you. There are people, there are people who are going ahead of you. They came down. People who are playing, jet playing, they came down. Just because you got it all together, people of God, you want to create that kind of thing. Somebody did something for you in the past. Even if they gave you right, remember them. The Bible said that. Bible said it. The Bible said it. Ten lepers were healed. One came by and said, Lord, thank you. Amen. Amen. So don't let us not allow those things delay us. That gave it a bitterness, unforgiveness, strife, malice, and all the kind of stuff. It will delay us. God to the children of Israel, He said, I will release you 400 years. 430 whole years out of there. Imagine if they sent to you. And the time reach, then they go to free and say, no, we're adding more there. <laughs> so your behavior will either make it short or your behavior will make it longer. There are things that we're supposed to own in this life. But because of our behavior, we're not owning them. You've been here before, right? God bless you. I love you, man. I love you so much. God bless you. Let's stay on our feet. I want to release you so you can go eat your Madonna. Minister, minister, not here. So, uh, Prince, I can take you to the Chinese buffet if you want to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can take you there. Raise our hand to heaven. I want to say this again. I want to repeat the, what I saw. <coughs> I saw, I repeat this. I was praying, I saw a shooting, a terrible shooting in a school compound. The gunman did not enter in a school because it was locked. There was no way for him to enter. So he waited in a school compound. When the children came out of school waiting for their bus and he opened fire on the watching news, you will see that happening if we don't pray. Amen? That's what I saw. God continued to show me these things. And I saw a renowned person that on TV 24 7. A world new person had a car accident and died. Watch the news. This is what I keep saying. This is my third time saying it. There will be a terrible compound, school compound shooting. And I'm telling everybody here under the sound of my voice, not because I want you to come to church, but the Lord told me, don't miss service until the 31st of this month. I mean the 31st of December. The whole rest of the year, because terrible things are going to happen. Only those are covered. Say, don't want you to enter next year. I'm serious. So please do your duty. Eh? Whatever you have to go, postpone it. Be in church. 
in, in church. Honor the cup. I'm serious. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for your people that are here. Your coming to church blesses God's heart. Because you are honoring the prophet. When I see you, you don't know the joy it brings to me. When I see you every Sunday, every week, bring joy to me. And I know God is more happy. Amen. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. All right. Um, please bear me one second. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I have to do the instruction that God gave me. Anybody got a sheet of papers? Sheet of paper. Honestly, I want sheet of papers. Sheet of paper. Give me a lot of sheet. Even envelopes. Give me envelopes. Pass it to everybody. I want somebody to read. I want you to read a prayer request and bring it on the altar. What you want God to do for you? Just seat it up. You don't have to put your name there. God want your name. I was here just now, and the Lord said, I should ask for your prayer request. I'm going to pray only this week. On Friday, this coming Friday, everybody will come to church. We will let fire on it and burn it. You will not see that problem anymore. It will be burned. So please pass it over. Red, not more than three things. Okay? I'm going to, I did this in New Jersey, and a lady went and wrote 15 things down. When I saw it, I said, but later you wrote 15 things. He said, let go shoot three from there. <laughs> but the problem was too much, amen? So before we tell our communion, read three prayer requests. Three. And bring it on the altar quickly. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Read it quickly. I'm giving you, as an extra time now, I'm done already. Get extra time. And when you go to work and somebody tell you, say, okay, you know what? Stay and take three. Not more than three. Prince and Reyes, don't put your name. Everybody must be a part. I don't want to see it. Don't put your name on it. Don't put your name. I don't want to know your problem. Just read it. Give it to them. And get in one envelope to put a sacrificial seed inside. Can't go before the Lord empty hand. Yeah. Write it down quickly. Three things. Get in shit. I'm waiting. No distraction, please. Get read three things. Okay, three things. My message was finished already before that, that word came. I don't want to disobey the word. Can somebody give me pain to read my own? She don't need a Yeah, okay, she will cash out. If you cash out, cash. Just put a C, put a C in the envelope. I need it. Towards your prayer request. Do it now. I'm not saying tomorrow. Put a C inside now. Hmm? Get envelope, please. Put 50. I mean, let me get you prophetic number. Prophetic number is 40. 70 and 120. That's prophetic number. 40 is a number of prophetic. I'm giving you according to your sacrifice, God will bless you. Amen. It's 120, 70, and 40. God say Moses said you live for 70 years. God said you live for 120. And I heard the Bible talking about Moses fasted for 40 days. The children of Israel, 40 days. And order that 40 is a prophetic number. Jesus fasted for 40 days. So just put a C inside. It starts from 40, 70, and 120. Whatever you can afford in no, in no category. But make sure and do it. Put your prayer request. I, I, you will, and you will testify. You will come here and say, I wrote my prayer request. And I put it on the altar. Amen. And God has done it. Amen. So I want you to prove what God is doing in the church. We will burn it on Friday. If you don't have cash, do my, do my cash out. Somebody put my cash up there. Put my cash up there, please. Let everybody see it. Very simple. Your discuss, if your husband is aware, your discuss, your prayer regret, they're discussing that prayer regret. Two more children, one way, all of that. They're discussing. I see there. Are your prayer regret, you're discussing? That's good. Three things. Put it on the altar. Oh, okay. Two more children. No, 
Prophet A. A. F. A. Cook, hurry up so we can tell our communion. What did you do? Let's start it. Put it on the altar. Okay, yeah, my wife just reminded that we should pray for the children in the school that I saw so it can't happen. So when you bring your offering, please, we we'll just stand and just pray to say, not because it's not our children, so we should pray for other children as well. Okay, put a prayer request here. I want a prayer request. Put it on the altar. Friday, we'll be burning this thing down. We'll be burning it down. And I promise you, what you wrote down, you would never experience it no more. Amen. Because we'll burn it. What are the delay, the hindrance, it's going to be burned. Put your prayer request. Is that heating? Put it on the altar. My wife believed in me so powerfully. She brought a seed. That's good. You brought your prayer request? Put your prayer request there. Put for your. Is there? All right. Two children. <laughs> okay, everybody pray request. Finish next thing on our feet, please. Holy Spirit, thank you. I have done what you told me to do. I have done what you told me to do, Lord. Read your prayer request. Yeah. Please, people of God, we've been coming here Thursday. We can't see you for prayer meeting. Stop slashing. You slatting, rather. You slash. Slacking. Okay. <laughs> slacking. It kept slacking. Uh -huh. I got help on. Amen. <laughs> Thursday, 7 o'clock. Prayer meeting. And please don't forsake the Bauer School. It's also as Bauer Study. Every Tuesday we are here at 7 o'clock. Please don't miss it. Please follow my new page, A. A. Fever Cook. Amen. I hope you have any announcement. And join me every morning, 5 a.m., on Facebook Live, it's called the Morning Glory. Because God wants me to pray for people while they're on their way to work and while children on their way to school. Because there are a lot of people that go to work, they can't come by home. They end up in a hospital, they end up somewhere else. Some children go to school, they can't come by. So 5 a.m. every Monday is the Morning Glory. Join me on Facebook Live for us to pray. And every one is it. Have you done? Let's stay on our feet. Our feet, if you done. Thank you, Lord. Cut on the riches. Cut on this. Don't answer to that name. Amen. Let us stand. We, we, we. It's almost one thirty. We gotta go. Do you know what happened? Right? Raise your right hand to heaven. And I want everybody silent, please. Everybody, please keep silent. Let us keep silent, please. Everything that God tells me to do, I will continue to say it to you. A level you have to do it or not. I will never leave anything undone by the grace of God. And there will be no accident before you that God will not show me for us to cancel. As long as you continue to be on this courage, God will continue to show me things that is ahead of you to tell his people. I don't sleep at night. I pray every night by the grace of God. We want to encourage you, people of God. Let us support what God has given us. Let us continue to work for him. In the name of Jesus. As you're about to come and take the communion. The Bible says on the night that Jesus, before he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said, this is the new covenant. 
He took wine and he blessed it and he drank. And he said, there is the blood that will be shared for you. He said, do this in remembrance of me. As often as you do this, you will have life. Listen to me. I don't care what the doctor has diagnosed inside of you. As you approach this communion, it will be flesh out of your sister in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, except you did not call me. Except you didn't appear to me on Jamaica Road many years ago. I said I was a different person I saw. But it was you, Lord, that I saw with two angels on your side. Father God, I pray that every disease, diseases that is in our system, knowing it or unknowing it, as you approach the communion, this blood of yours, it's a super dose that we're about to take. Lord, we flesh everything from our system in the name of Jesus. We flesh barrenness on on, on productivities. We destroy everything that the devil has planted for us in the name of Jesus. We come against every fiber, every sickness, every hindrance. We destroy it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O God. Let your communion bless us today. Let it cleanse, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I should take the communion. Whatever that is in your system that is not of God, it will be flesh up. You will go back to the hospital and the doctor will tell you that. All right. We are going to pray for the children so that God will expose that gun man. As that gun man, as that gun man approach any school campus, let there be a reporter. Father, I want you to pray with me quickly before the communion. It's serious. Let's pray. Everybody raise your voice. Say, Lord, anywhere the gunman will go to school to shoot, let him be exposed. Just one prayer. Let him be exposed. 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 Let the camera also camera crush him. Let the also camera locate him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ma karabra karabro karababa shita. Ye ke le bebe karabos kilaba. Ye karababas ke terebo. In Jesus' name. Watch the news. They will arrest him. In the name of Jesus. You will hear it. You will say, hey, somebody want to go make street activity on the school. And they will catch him. I said they will catch him. I said they will catch him. I said they will catch him. They will catch him. They will arrest him. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come. As you go back to New York, your life will never be the same. Amen. Whatever the enemy, you came here Friday, I don't know you, my first time seeing you, your son knew will reveal. I pray whatever danger that is before him, if I be a true servant of God, it is cancer in Jesus' name. Amen. We decree and we declare, Lord. No woman will put him in trouble. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell him to be careful with a lady. You hear what I'm saying? Tell him to be careful with a lady. The need stay coming to me. I see the name C H U K W U K Z O M. Is that it? I got it correct? Chukukazam. We well, thank you, Lord, for the word that you have revealed. I don't, I can't pronounce that name. I can just see it in the spirit. And we well, thank you, Jesus. It is cancer. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. And your son's birthday is this month, November? The November 18? Am I talking to you? November 18? November 18? You will be 33. Eh? Yes. You, you tell me, eh? We ever discuss it anywhere? <laughs> My God, Friday will be something uh, something on me. I won't, I won't continue right now, but you got to go home. Amen? Father, we bless the communion. Come and take your communion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come closer, Digon Boy. Digon Boy is in Harper, Maryland. Today, your birthday. Wow, wow, 
Wow, Digo is eight year old today. Wow, he he don't look like it. He don't look like it. 